Welcome to the 19th Annual Neighborhood Awards. We're so glad that you're here. I'd like to take a minute to thank our luncheon sponsors, Aetna and Maritain Health. Thanks to their generous sponsorship, we're able to present today's Fort Worth Neighborhood Awards luncheon at no charge to our neighborhoods. Thank you, Edna and Maritain Health, advocates for healthier living and neighborhoods. Also joining us today to give the invocation is, past is Pastor Patrick E. Winfield II. He's campus pastor of the Potter's House Fort Worth and a member of the Mayor's Faith Cabinet. I'd like to welcome him to come up this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Pleasure to see everybody in here smiling on a cold day in Texas. Now I'm from Chicago, so cold I am not uh, I am not foreign to this, but I am foreign to it, it being in Texas, which is one of the reasons why I moved from Chicago to Texas. But let's pray that God would give us his warming grace. Father, we love you and thank you so much for being here. We thank you for the opportunity and the honor, Father, to serve this community, for the opportunity, Father, to be lights in our dark world. We ask and pray, Father, that you would help us even now to continue on the journey, Father, towards lighting up the lives of people so that their lives can be better. We ask and pray, Father, for every family that's represented in here to be protected and kept, O oh God, by your grace. Now bless the food, bless the fellowship, bless the work of our dear mayor and all of the cabinet. And Father, we ask that you would lead us and guide us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> okay, um, I hope everyone enjoyed the exhibit tables this morning. If there are any you missed, don't worry. You can visit the Community Engagement website next week where we'll post some of the exhibitor handouts for you to download. We thank our elected officials for their strong support of Fort Worth neighborhoods. City Council members, school board members, and others, thank you for being here today. Unfortunately, Mayor Maddie Parker could not be with us, but she did record a message and asked us to play it for you. Hello and welcome to the 2023 Fort Worth Neighborhood Awards. I am Fort Worth Mayor Maddie Parker, and the people in this room are the most involved and dedicated residents in the entire city, but you probably already knew that. I really wish I could be with you all today because the Neighborhood Awards are truly a representation of Fort Worth at its best. Awards are given for neighbors, neighborhoods, and city staff that make our communities thrive. You are bringing people together, solving issues, making neighborhoods more beautiful and vibrant, and above all, making Fort Worth a home. Congratulations to all of our finalists today. Thank you for your time and talent spent making Fort Worth an incredible place to live, work, and raise a family. Big thanks to Mayor Parker. We have many city employees here today who serve our neighborhoods in different ways, including our city manager, David Cook, assistant city managers, department heads, and council district directors. Thank you for your support. And last but not least, my staff, the community engagement team. Will you please stand? We have Tracy Edwards, Terrence Hamilton, Dot Kent, and Teresa magana -Leach. I've worked for months planning this wonderful event for you. Now please welcome our communications and public engagement director, Michelle Goot. Welcome. This is one of my favorite days. It's such a fun time celebrating your hard work. I want to tell you a little bit about today's keynote speaker. Annette Landeros grew up in San Antonio, but got to Fort Worth as soon as she could by way of Washington, D.C. This first generation college student received her bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, then landed a job at the U.S. Department of Transportation. Today, she is the president and CEO of the Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, where she helps small businesses thrive. In fact, she and her husband started a small business, Cafe Azul, on the city's north side, where the couple lives with their two children. On a personal note, I would like to thank her for all her work in helping us on the 2020 census to reach our Hispanic community. When asked what's the best advice she ever, she's ever received, Annette says, achieving success isn't the goal. The goal is to bring others with you. We couldn't agree more. That's what the neighborhoods, community, and leadership is all about, 
bringing others along with you. And you are all a perfect example of that in this room. Please welcome Annette Landeros. Hello, everybody. They've taped this microphone down. I'm a walker, so we're just going to stand. But I'm excited to be here with you all. I feel like I'm in a room of my fellow, what my dad said, joiners. Um, he said if there was a sign-up sheet, I was putting my name on it since a young child. And so I love all things about nonprofits and committees and getting involved in your neighborhood and how can we help our city. And so it's exciting. I feel like I'm in a room of my own people um, who are equally interested in making an impact in their community. Uh, I was trying to think back to my own neighborhood and my own experience growing up in San Antonio and what my most distinct um, memory was of my first interaction with like city officials or city government. And so I was actually a little bit about me. I'm the daughter of two Mexican immigrants. Uh, my father was a, is a city bus driver, recently retired. My mother worked for the United States Postal Service her whole life. They worked as pretty long hours. Um, to, to help, you know, put my, my sister and I through school, but I was also um, very close to our elementary school, so because they couldn't take me to school, I actually walked to and from school, um, and because of that, they made sure I knew that if I saw anything suspicious or if I felt unsafe, to call the police immediately, that they would be there to help. And I did that um, quite often, actually. Uh, <laughs> And I, I was a very suspicious child, and if I saw a car circle, I'd call to the point where the officers gave me the non-emergency number, um, and I had it, you know, at home on the refrigerator, and I would call them too, and, and just let them know when I would see things, or you know, one time I called because there was a hurt bird, um, and so, I, and that it was chirping really loudly and scary, and I didn't know what to do on the way home from school. Um, but I, it was interesting because these are, it's funny now, but I, I apologize to all those police officers who surely had more important things to do. Uh, but they were always so kind and they never told me like, hey kids, stop calling. Um, I felt like we were working together to keep our neighborhood safe. Um, and always, you know, just I think entertained, but also I think they embraced the fact that, you know, there is a young child that really trusted them and, um, and was excited to, to, you know, let them know if something was going awry in the neighborhood. Um, and so that was my first kind of community activity, um, walking to and from school. Um, and I really, I think because of that, I always had a very warm appreciation for folks that were, you know, civil servants. Um, and, and also, uh, the story is that I've always known I wanted to work for the federal government, which I did um, since I was the age of 15. And folks are like, that's a very weird thing to want to do. But I think it was because I did create those bonds with folks in, in, in you know, civil service. Also, my father always explained to me how decisions were made in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, because I'd ask, like, well, how does that happen? It ha you know, well, in Washington, D.C., we elect leaders, and then they get to go and decide for us, and this and that. And so at a very early age, I wanted to be a part of those conversations. I wanted to be informed. I wanted to give my opinions, and I wanted to, to just be a part of the process. And so really I set off to do that, and I had a 12-year career with the federal government for the Inspector General of the U.S. Department of Transportation. That's the internal auditor of DOT. Each department has one. I always said I had the best job which was to get paid to criticize the government. Uh, as an auditor, you get to do that. And so it was wonderful um, to be able to peel back the onion and, and seek efficiency and really hope that we could help build a better, uh, better you know, form of government. And so that was a fantastic transition into my current role that was mentioned. Uh, three and a half years ago, I assumed the role of president and CEO for the Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And it's, um, it's been a pleasure. I got here as fast as I could, which was you know, about 14 years ago from Washington, D.C. I did achieve that goal at the age of 15 of being in D.C. where all the decisions are made. And if you ask why did I leave if that was the goal, it was because of community. 
I felt that even though I was where I thought I wanted to be, the missing piece of the puzzle for me to feel fulfilled was a sense of community. And I didn't get that in DC. DC is a lot of folks that are there for their job. They're in and out, um, you know, and, and it's a wonderful place to work on very interesting things and meet a large, you know, a, array of people. But I really missed being a part of a community. And so that's what brought me to Fort Worth. I, um, I told my job that I was interested in going back to Texas and I was gonna start looking. They said, we have a regional office that's actually right here on Throckmorton and the federal building. And they said, do you wanna go to Fort Worth? And I said, sure, it's Texas. I'm sure it'll be lovely. I'm, and then I, in my head, I was thinking, aha, I'll stay there a year or two, then head back to San Antonio or Austin where I went to grad school. Um, what I did not realize was that I would be captivated by the city of Fort Worth. And I hear this story over and over again. Uh, just yesterday I was with a retired Lockheed executive and he was telling somebody else, like, once you get here, be careful. It's going to get you. You will be captivated. And so what I was missing in D.C., I got in spades here in Fort Worth, right? the feeling that we were all in it together, the feeling that there was opportunities for you to get involved and be a part of the creation of your community, the feeling that everyone wanted to better our city, that we were going to have the tough conversations, that we were gonna admit our shortcomings while striving to do better. And all of that was exactly what I found in Fort Worth, Texas. It's, Really, and I see all of you, and, and I think to myself, this room is filled with the folks that are pushing us forward. It is truly you that are creating the fabric that when people come to Fort Worth for a job, like I did, that is going to keep them here, that is going to make them drink that, you know, that, that awesome Kool-Aid, that Fort Worth Kool-Aid, and say, all right, I'm here. I'm here. I'm engaged, I'm gonna walk next to you, we're gonna build this together. I'm gonna, I got married here, I've had two babies here, I own a business now here. I'm here, y'all, like I am not leaving. To the point where my parents, I think, realized I was never coming back to San Antonio, and now they're here. Um, so that is how powerful what you all are creating is and how you all are paying an impact even in our economy. So when, you know, at the Fort Worth Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, it is our job to champion the business community here in Fort Worth. Of course, yes, we are the Hispanic Chamber. We have a lot of Hispanic members, but we also have a lot of non-Hispanic members. We have black owned businesses. We have every, every type of business you can imagine that are members of the Hispanic Chamber, and it is our job to champion all of them. Why? Because we tell the taqueria on the corner, you are not just serving tacos, senor, you are creating jobs. You are a job creator, you are helping families provide for their children. You are economic impact. So even though you're a small business, multiply that by the thousands that we have, that is economic impact. And what is it that they want when they're trying to attract the top talent? Because that's what they do want, top tr talent. They want neighborhoods that are going to make people want to stay. That's how we're all weaved together. You all are building the foundation for our city's success. The businesses are creating the jobs for you all to provide and continue to grow. But we can't exist on our own and we can't succeed on our own. So that's why I'm a huge champion and we try to do that. We actually, Carlos and I were just at uh, the Artes de Rosa Theater where today kicked off the first day of the Northside Main Street America pilot program. This was a vision that actually started at the city we appreciate their vision, but what it's going to do is it's going to guide us through a community-driven commercial district revitalization where that theater is filled with 92, because we counted on my way out, 
92 stakeholders, neighbors, folks that grew up in the neighborhood that are ready to say what they'd like to see from the business community, what they want to see on North Main, and how we can provide that so that we can work together as a woven fabric of success here in Fort Worth. So I just want to say to all of you that are doing the tremendous work, that are winning the awards, I know what it's like to be in the community. I know your ear is full every day. I know you get a text when something wrong happens. You know what I mean? I know you get two different opinions of, you know, she said this, he said that. I don't know, can you believe them? I know you all filter through all of that as well as you're attempting to lead your neighborhood forward. But I assure you that all of the hard work, all of the late nights, all of the things that you have done and the time that you've committed, that it could be family time or personal time. You could be reading a book. How many of you would love to read a book? I would love to read a book, <laughs> right? I would love to read a book. Haven't read a book in a while. Um, but. All of that time that you commit is well worth it because you're helping us build the Fort Worth that we want to see. And I can tell you after living in several communities in different parts of the country, Fort Worth is doing it right. We are trying to do it right. And the reason that we're able to is because you all are helping guide that work. So I encourage all of you to continue to connect with your business community, with your chambers. If you haven't connected with a chamber of commerce, I volunteer mine to be the first. We'd be happy to introduce you. There's two other outstanding chambers in our city as well. And then when you start to move out, I think in total in DFW, there's 52. There's a lot of us. But we are all working for the same reason to champion business and community. So I encourage you to utilize us to tell us how our businesses can help you do your work better to tell us which businesses you'd like to align with to be your champions of your neighborhood as well. Or if there's a vacancy and you're like, hey, you know what we need? The reason that my husband and I opened a coffee shop in Northside was because we got tired of complaining that there wasn't a coffee shop in Northside. And finally we were like, maybe we need to open a coffee shop in Northside. And, and so we did. So if there is a place, a need, feel free to connect. We've got members that are interested in expanding and they may be interested in that retail space. What is it that you need in that space? Is it an ice cream shop? Is it, you know, a coffee shop? Is it, you know, we need more dentists, whatever it may be, professional services. I recommend you connect with your chamber, utilize us, make us do our job and, and earn your, your trust as well. But thank you so much to all of you for your hard work. I look forward to continuing to work alongside you to build the best city we can build. And, and kudos to the work that you've already accomplished. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Annette. The City of Fort Worth created the Neighborhood Awards to recognize the projects and activities that bring folks together and make our city a great place to live, work, and play. Today we'll recognize outstanding work by both HOAs and voluntary neighborhood associations, which compete separately in these categories. We'll also give three individual awards and name Fort Worth's Neighborhood of the Year. A panel of judges from other North Texas municipalities reviewed the nominations and chose today's winners. We thank them for their time. Now I'd like to hand it over to District 2 Councilmember Carlos Flores, who has graciously agreed to fill in for Mayor Parker today. Councilmember Flores. Thank you, Amethyst, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. How's the food? Good? And isn't this a wonderful space? Ashton Depot does have it in a lot of historical sense. And it's a wonderful space to gather here and uh, recognize all of you. I'd like to start off my comments you know, by saying that um, I really appreciate my fellow council members and city staff for really making the inner workings of city government work for all of us. Because bottom line, we are all residents too. Good neighbors make life in the city livable. But it's great neighborhoods that make the city vibrant. 
and you're part of that. The times that you take from your busy lives to meet, to talk about those things that impact your neighborhoods are very important. They offer us a touchstone of what city government can do to make your lives better, to make your neighborhoods the great places to live that we all work towards making. So, in that spirit, I'd like to start by saying that um, it is important to recognize also our sponsors, because this year they really made it happen for us. So I'd like to start with Aetna and Maritain Health, you know, whose table I'm at, thank you very much. <laughs> Maritain is a subsidiary of Aetna and CVS Health, one of the nation's largest third-party administrators of health benefits. And for more than 10 years, they provided medical insurance for thousands of our city employees, their families, and retirees. But even more important, Aetna and Maritain have helped our employees control their diabetes, which in turn has saved lives and costs. Would our Aetna Maritain sponsors please stand to be recognized so our neighborhoods can recognize you all? Thank you. Our first awards recognize excellence in communication, and that's very important for all organizations. Neighborhood newsletters are judged on content and appearance, as well as how well they reach their intended audience. As I announce the names, would the editor or an officer please come forward to receive the award and remain for a group photo, also very important, here in front of the backdrop to my left. This year's newsletter award winners are Bentley Village Water Chase, okay, start moving, uh, Berkeley Place, Carter Riverside, Crestwood, Eastern Hills, <laughs> Oakhurst, Ridgely North, and Wedgwood East. So again, come on up. These associations produce anywhere from four to 12 newsletters a year. They're often electronic newsletters that are emailed to neighbors. Most use member dues to cover costs. Some sell advertising to neighborhood businesses. They feature stories about residents and photos from neighborhood events. They often reprint information from the city about public meetings and project updates. We love that. Congratulations to our neighborhood newsletter winners. Thank you, everybody, and congratulations. Job well done. All right, moving along. Let's see. I think you can know. Okay. The next category is the Fort Worth Pride Award. It's given to an organization that improves physical aspects of their neighborhood. Neighborhoods may have completed beautification projects, hosted cleanups, build community gardens, or worked with the city departments uh, and others to make their neighborhood cleaner and more attractive. Will the finalists please stand at your tables? as I announce your names. In the near southwest Fort Worth area, Berkeley Place Association, they adopted a large city-owned green space on Ward Parkway that was nothing more than a few trees and mostly dead grass. Through private fundraising, volunteer work hours, and the city's help connecting water for irrigation, Hargrove Memorial Park was born. Residents say it is now a remarkable space for anyone seeking a quiet moment on a bench or tossing a frisbee or football. In East Fort Worth, Eastern Hills Neighborhood Association, after 15 years, applause, 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 after 15 years of successful Yard of the Month and Christmas light contest, board members wanted to try something new. With lingering COVID concerns, they organized an outdoor plant sale. It was low budget, contributed to the beauty of the neighborhood and got residents involved. Congrats. And in South, feel free to applaud, don't wait on me. All right. And in Southeast Fort Worth, Highland Hills. 
The association reached out to the city about several issues facing the neighborhood, including street repairs, crime, and code compliance. They organized a meeting and tour of the neighborhood so city representatives could see firsthand what action was needed. And the winner is... <laughs> Eastern Hills. <laughs> Come on now! <laughs> okay. Now, would you and Council Member Blaylock, Alan, please come forward while Amethyst tells us a little bit more about the project. With membership down after COVID, Eastern Hills needed a low budget way to get neighbors engaged again. The idea of a plant sale sprouted. Board members started growing seeds last winter and put out the word on next door that they were looking for small plants to sell in the spring. Not only did they get plants, but hand painted flower pots and homemade birdhouses too. They partnered with local businesses for additional donations and, and neighbors volunteered to staff the sale and offer plant care tips. Not only did the new event succeed in getting neighbors together, the plant sale raised $700 for the association. And yes, it's become a new annual event. Congratulations, Eastern Hills. Our next award category is the Spirit of Fort Worth Award. It's given to associations that foster social revitalization, enhance cultural aspects of the neighborhood, or just simply make residents feel welcome and connected. Beginning with HOAs, will the finalists please stand? In North Fort Worth, Hewland Heights HOA. The neighborhood annual 4th of July event attracts more than 150 neighbors. The HOA's new social chair took advantage of the popular event and posted a sign-up sheet to gauge interest in the ladies' lunch brunch. When 60 ladies signed up, Hewlin Heights ended up with two lunch brunches. The groups also planned cookie exchanges, children activities, and neighborhood events. In far north Fort Worth, the villages of Woodland Springs, the HOA's amenity center was destroyed in the 2021 winter storm. Most community events stopped altogether. In August 2022, reconstruction was complete, but the, north, but the community's culture still needed mending. A fall festival brought everyone together and kick-started the association's social events. The HOA Spirit of Fort Worth winner is Villages of Woodland Springs, also known as VALS, for those that are into acronyms. Come on down. Now, Councilmember Firestone is not here, is that correct? Okay, so uh, he does send his congratulations. He couldn't be here because of a family event. Fall Festival was organized by the VOWS Events Committee made up of resident volunteers. The team planned ways for all residents to participate by providing free entertainment activities with varying mobility requirements and allergy conscious treats. Partnerships were crucial. Ten local businesses provided trunk or treat stations. Students from nearby schools stuffed goodie bags, ran carnival games, and helped with setup. There were opportunities for residents to give back too, though on-site blood donations or pet rescue adoptions. Clearly, the VOW social scene is back in a big way. Congratulations, Villages of Woodland Springs. Our next category in the Voluntary Association category. There were a total of eight entries. We wanted to show you all the names here before announcing the finalists, so let me list them. Berkeley Place for its Sensory Safe Halloween, Carter Riverside for its Kickball Challenge, Como's Juneteenth Celebration, Eastern Hills Donation Drive for High School Care Closet, Garden of Eden's National Night Out Chili Cook-Off, Historic Southside's Community Tour, multiple Oakhurst events, including an inaugural Witch's Stroll and Costume Contest, and Woodhaven's Library Clock Tower Dedication. Many terrific projects here. All right, now, will the finalists please stand? All of, all of them. Okay. Berkeley Place residents created a sensory safe Halloween event for special needs children with allergies, autism, or physical limitations. A few days before Halloween, about 100 homes participated agreeing not to play loud music or frighten children and offer allergy free treats. With MedStar's help, neighbors say the event had changed the face of Halloween for families who need a quiet experience. Located in Southwest Fort Worth, Como Neighborhood Advisory Council. After Juneteenth was declared a national holiday in 2021, 
Como set its sights on creating a grand celebration in 2022. Their goal was to educate and preserve the history of its mostly African-American community. The Lake Como Juneteenth celebration included a walk, a history program, a home and yard decorating contest, and college scholarship awards. And Oakhurst in near Fort Worth. Oakhurst pulls together on multiple annual events, including a 4th of July parade, first responders dinner, and Santa in the park. In 2022, Oakhurst added something new. The inaugural Witches' Stroll featured ladies in their most bewitching outfits distributing candy and cheer while competing for con uh, costume contest prizes. And the winner is Lake Como. <laughs> Come on down. Now, Council Member Crane regrets he couldn't be here today, but his district directors, I believe, are here for a photo. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. The Lake Como Juneteenth celebration began at one of the area's oldest churches with a walk to the neighborhood's community center. There, a program shared the history of Lake Como, the importance of Juneteenth, and recognized Como community organizations and trailblazers. Judges selected a winner in the Juneteenth Home and Yard Decorating Contest, as well as scholarship winners. Neighbors, expect, neighbors expected an uptick in participation because Juneteenth was recently made a national holiday, but it was even more than expected in a good way. Nearly 200 people attended. Como volunteers donated more than 200 hours planning, organizing, fundraising, setting up, and cleaning up. Their extraordinary efforts ensured the Juneteenth celebration was free of charge to all. Congratulations, Como Neighborhood Advisory Council. All right, our next category, the Civic Engagement Community Collaboration Award. This recognizes neighborhoods that partner with others to tackle significant or creative initiatives. It may work with city staff, elected officials, schools, businesses, or other neighborhoods and civic groups to bring about positive change for their neighborhood or the city as a whole. Will the three finalists in the category, the voluntary category that is, please stand up as we highlight your efforts. First, in Northeast Fort Worth, Garden of Eden. Members nominated two of the neighborhood's very old native pecan trees for the city's heritage tree program. Residents measured the trees, documented their exact locations, and interviewed longtime residents who remembered collecting pecans from the 100-year-old trees. As a result, Garden of Eden pecans earned heritage tree status last year, and Tarrant County presented the neighborhood with new seedlings to plant. In East Fort Worth, Riverside Alliance, Central Meadowbrook, and West Meadowbrook Associations. Riverside Alliance leaders became aware of a zoning change that would have allowed a series of large commercial warehouses adjacent to Gateway Park. Working with civic groups, Riverside Alliance not only stopped the zoning change, but also helped re-energize interest in the park development. And in East Fort Worth, Woodhaven, and Near East Side, neighbors collaborated with Fort Worth Public Art and the East Regional Library on Public Art Project, representing wildflowers on the hill between the library and I-30. In addition to input on artist selection, residents helped choose library quotes embedded in the colorful posts that made up the sculpture and participated in the artworks dedication program. And the winner is Riverside Alliance, Central and West Meadowbrook. I need council members Blaylock and Nettles to come on up here. Riverside Alliance is a coalition of seven neighborhood associations and three community partners. When they learned of a potential zoning change involving 30 acres near Gateway Park, they reached out to Central and West Meadowbrook associations that are close to the park. First, representatives appeared before the Zoning Commission to request a delay and a meeting with the developer to explain the project. Residents were concerned the proposed warehouses would have a negative impact on the visual appeal of the park, its future development, and bring commercial traffic to a nearby unrepresented neighborhoods. The grassroots effort involved longtime neighbors, newcomers, former elected officials, businesses, and groups like Streams and Valleys and the Sierra Club. The Alliance made sure to engage a translator to help communicate with Spanish-speaking residents who live nearby. After seven months of discussions and meetings, developers withdrew the project. The Alliance says the fight has renewed interest in positive development of Gateway Park and the surrounding area. Congratulations to all. Yeah. 
All right, moving along, our next category, Health and Wellness Award. This honors a significant effort to promote exercise, health and wellness, safety and recreation, all of which lead to a better quality of life. Judges named four finalists. Berkeley Place Association. They initiated a bikes and barbecue cycling event. The one-day event, 20-mile ride, culminated with a barbecue lunch in the neighborhood. Cyclists in their 30s and 60s signed up for the ride. Two routes allowed occasional and experienced riders to pedal at their own pace. Those who rode say they found a new family. They enjoyed it so much, quarterly rides are now planned going forward. Carter Riverside. They partnered with bike gangs of Fort Worth to establish a neighborhood bike shop in a box. It's a 20-foot shipping container sited at the neighborhood church and staffed by background-checked volunteers. Those volunteers offer free bike repairs, free helmets, even free bikes to children who don't have one, encouraging everyone to get out and ride. Garden of Eden. Their annual 5K fun run and one-mile walk encourage organizers to, and participants to push through whatever health and personal issues they were facing. Neighborhood leaders made it a point to involve everyone, seniors and church elders help register runners the day of the race, children and volunteers with disabilities, staff cheer stations, hand out water bottles, and a low entry fee meant that everyone could participate. And finally, Highland Hills. Their annual pink event celebrates breast cancer survivors and emphasizes the importance of early detection. Momentary in-kind donations from local businesses, or sorry, not momentary, monetary, <laughs> that makes more sense. In-kind donations from local businesses help fund the event, and participation by health agencies connects residents with resources to prevent breast cancer. And the winner is Carter Riverside. <laughs> Alan, we're going to need you in the front again. First, Carter Riverside tackled finding a no-rent location for its bike shop in a box. New Riverside Methodist Church doesn't charge for water or electricity either. While recruiting volunteers to run the shop, Carter Riverside simultaneously planned a grand opening celebration. The celebration, plus advertising on social media, email, and the neighborhood website, let neighbors know the shop is open every Sunday for, every Sunday for free, no appointment bike repairs. The neighborhood also organizes group bike rides. Congratulations, Carter Riverside. Thanks and congratulations, everybody. And now it's time for our individual awards. I want to remind you these folks are not nominated by city council or city staff, but by members of their own communities that they serve. Our first award is given in memory of former city council member Danny Scarth and honors his legacy of public service, inclusion, and kindness. The Danny Scarth Trailblazer Award recognizes someone who, in their everyday life, raises awareness and makes real changes that improve opportunities for persons with disabilities. And the finalists are the husband and wife team of Anderson and Dorothy Lampkin, who serve the deaf community as interpreters and translators. Every week, they use American Sign Language to share worship and funeral services at area churches, as well as assist individuals by interpreting at doctor visits and other appointments. Susan Schmidt, a longtime volunteer, who's logged more than 12,000 hours of service at JPS Hospital. Despite mobility issues, Susan remains active in the community, speaking to young adult groups about the independence that they can achieve. Friends say she's a role model who encourages others with handicaps and also advocates for change. Daniel White. Daniel and a group of like-minded individuals established a group that eventually became the Fort Worth Chapel, or sorry, chapter of the Hearing Lost Association of America. Currently, he handles communications for the group's website, Facebook page, and monthly newsletter, keeping members aware of legal issues and advances in technology for the hard of hearing in their community. And the winner is Dorothy and Anderson Lampkin. And would the members of the city's diversity and inclusion department also join us up in the front for a photo? 
The Lampkins interpret services every week at Shiloh Baptist Church, allowing members who are hard of hearing to fully participate in worship. They also serve the wider deaf community in Fort Worth by helping fill out applications, relaying information between doctor and patient, advising businesses how to improve facilities and signage, teaching sign language to others, and raising money to purchase hearing aids for children. The scarcity of interpreters and cost of service prevent many from seeking help. Because the Lampkins volunteer their time and transportation, individuals with hearing challenges can participate in social activities and have access to better jobs. Congratulations, Dorothy and Anderson Lampkin. In our next category that also recognizes our unsung heroes, neighborhood patrol officers or MPOs. They do all the things that regular police officers do, but they're connected to our neighborhoods. MPOs also identify crime trends in the neighborhoods that they're assigned to, share that information with the residents and business owners. They attend community meetings and events and recruit volunteers for citizens on patrol. They are often your most important link to the Fort Worth Police Department. Will the nominees please stand when I read these names? Elise Espinoza, nominated by Fair Haven. <laughs> Officer Espinoza attends monthly meetings to share crime stats and the do's and don'ts for city regulations. She connects residents with other city staff, such as code compliance, animal control, fire department, when needed. Last fall, she made it a point to let neighbors know about a free turkey giveaway for Thanksgiving. Next, Doyle Gilbert, nominated by Highland Hills. <laughs> Neighbors say Officer Gilbert goes far beyond his capacity as MPO. He's helped with beautification projects, career development, health initiatives, job fairs, toy donations for neighborhood youth. Residents say he does it all and does it well, treating Highland Hills as if it was his own home. Shanae Lopez, nominated by Wedgwood East. Officer Lopez goes out of her way to be responsive, taking the time to sit down with residents and board members to discuss issues and opportunities. She's always on the lookout for ways to make the area safer and stronger. Neighbors consider her an integral part of the community, participating in various neighborhood events throughout the year. Next we have Matt McClellan, nominated by Colonial Hills. <laughs> Association leaders say that Officer McClellan is consistent, dependable, and very attentive to the neighbor's concerns. And those concerns are often wide-ranging, since Officer McClellan serves neighborhoods that surround the TCU area. Game day traffic, street parking, late night parties, porta potties He's seen it and helped it all. <laughs> Next we have Darren Merck, nominated by Carter Riverside. Officer Merck emails crime reports weekly, answers neighbors' calls at all hours of the day, and attends numerous neighborhood and school events. He not only recruits and trains citizen on patrol members, he's often on the radio base while they're patrolling. Neighbors say he's approachable, humble, and trustworthy. Francisco Moreno, nominated by Northwest Fort Worth Alliance. The Northwest Alliance area includes Marine Creek Ranch, Marine Creek Meadows, and Terrace Landing. They all say Officer Moreno strives to find resolution to any concern that's brought to his attention. For example, he was quick to change his schedule and work uh, overnights to help stop a string of late night crimes last year. Jesse Nava, nominated by Garden of Eden. <laughs> Officer Nava, provides weekly crime reports and timely tips for crime prevention. Residents say he understands the needs of underserved neighborhoods and patiently answers neighborhoods' questions about their rights as citizens. Last year, he worked to resolve a neighborhood speeding issue and helped with the association's National Night Out celebration. 
And finally, David Nicholson. <laughs> Nominated by Lake Como. Neighbors say Officer Nicholson listens, not just with his ears, but with his heart. He worked with Como citizens on patrol and the community to remove abandoned vehicles from hotspots for vagrants and suspicious activity. Residents also praise his work with young people. So thank you one and all for your service. And thank you neighbors for recognizing your NPOs. And the winner is David Nicholson from West Division. Chief Noakes, are you in the audience, sir? Okay. I was hoping Chief Noakes is here, but if anybody from his command staff would like to come up and join us, please feel welcome. Como leaders say NPO Nicholson is a consistent and visible presence in the community who serves beyond his required capacity. He attends monthly meetings of both Neighborhood Association and Code Blue volunteers. They say he's one of the first to sign up for Keep Como Beautiful events and even recruits others to take part. NPO Nicholson is also a strong supporter of youth programs and a role model for young men. At three school campuses, he takes part in children's sports and other programs. He partners with Como's Legacy Men's Group to mentor at-risk boys ages 13 to 17. During his off hours, he's taught nine, 11, nine, 10, and 11-year-old boys how to change the oil and tires on a car. Finally, Como neighbors praise Officer Nicholson for changing their perception of the role of a police officer in an underserved community. Congratulations, David Nicholson, our Neighborhood Patrol Officer of the Year. And I've been told that Chief Noakes would have been here, but he was speaking at a funeral. I think that was the most photos snapped of an award so far. Just noticing. All right. All right. Our final individual award today is Neighborhood, or sorry, Neighbor of the Year. This award recognizes an individual whose outstanding service has made a positive impact on people in their neighborhood. The best candidate for this award is not necessarily an association officer or leader, but more of an unsung hero to the community that they live in. As I call out the names, will the nominees please stand? John Devine, nominated by Pine Trees Estates HOA. John runs the HOA's bike gang, making sure every child has a bike and knows how to fix it. He helped build a children's playground, a community garden that provides fresh food for neighbors, organizes volunteer cleanups, and stocks a community pantry. Last year, he initiated the community's first ever, and very successful, National Night Out celebration. Next we have Rick Herring, nominated by Carter Riverside. Rick attended redistricting meetings, submitted maps, and presented arguments that resulted in the Carter Riverside community being unified within one city council district. He also took the lead on zoning cases that could have allowed commercial or industrial encroachment near Gateway Park and residential areas. Next we have Jerome Johnson, nominated by Highland Hills. As president of the association, Jerome has worked for multiple neighborhood improvements. Reaching out to the city, he helped initiate a month-long code compliance suite through the community to improve safety and cleanliness of the neighborhood. He worked with other city departments for sidewalk, street, and community improvements. Okay, now next we have Clarita Porter, nominated by Woodhaven. While no longer an officer, Clarita continues to serve on committees. She spearheaded dedications of both the public art sculpture and clock tower naming at East Regional Library. She participates in a long list of neighborhood activities, including East Side Blossoms Beautification, Cowtown Cleanup, Trunk or Treat, and attends city council meetings on behalf of Woodhaven and Near East Side Associations. Next we have Susan Turner, nominated by Hewlin Heights HOA. 
Neighbors say Susan almost single-handedly re-energized neighborhood social events. She started the ladies' lunch brunch that was so popular, as I said before, it split into two groups. She organized a garden club for men and women with meetings and classes, as well as neighborhood happy hours and a Bible study group. Neighborhoods say she continues to invite and excite with her positive emails and Facebook posts. Next, we have Geraldine Williams, nominated by Historic Southside. Most folks know her as Miss Jerry. She was nominated for hosting a community tour for council representatives, police, faith-based leaders, and residents, highlighting positive changes and goals for the area. We also know she serves as association secretary and as a county elections volunteer. Thank you all for your service and dedication to your communities and our city. And now, the winner is Rick Herring of Carter Riverside. Fellow neighbors, come on up and join us for a photo. Neighbors say Rick is involved in all aspects of community activism and stewardship. But last year, he spent many hours on that Gateway Park zoning case, making numerous appearances before the Zoning Commission and pulling together a coalition to defeat the zoning change. He also planned and executed a 25th anniversary celebration of the Riverside Alliance, helped raise funds for that bike shop in a box, suited up in the team shirt to play, to play the neighborhood's inaugural kickball game, and since becoming president of Carter Riverside Association last summer, the board says membership and attendance are up because his monthly meetings now feature seasonal and holiday themes and a variety of interesting speakers. Congratulations, Rick Herring, our Fort Worth Neighbor of the Year. Our final award today recognizes excellence in all of these categories, and any nominee can win. The Community Engagement Office will send a representative from the winning neighborhood to Neighborhoods USA National Competition in El Paso coming up in May. This year's winning association puts on a staggering number of events every year and planned and executed by volunteers. The variety of events and activities is also impressive and international. They strive to offer something for everyone in the neighborhood. The 2022 Fort Worth Neighborhood of the Year is... You want me to hang on that a little more? Nah, okay. Oakhurst Neighborhood Association. Yeah. Councilwoman Beck, City Manager Cook, come on down. Every December in Oakhurst, it's Santa in the park. Photos with St. Nick, hot chocolate, the children's activities such as making reindeer food. In spring, it's the annual Easter egg hunt in Oakhurst Park. Volunteers fill and scatter more than 1,000 eggs. There's a 4th of July parade and picnic. The association provides hot dogs and neighbors bring the sides. Oaktoberfest features a keg roll and steinhoist. And the annual first responders dinner, where neighbors feed fire, police, and MedStar employees who've served the neighborhood all year. That event's been going on for 34 years. By now, you may be wondering how they all do it. Events are planned by the Special Events Committee with input from neighbors. They have a yearly calendar and add events if they see interest. For example, the friendly kickball game with Carter Riverside was new last year, as well as the witch's stroll, which was added to the annual Halloween party. But there's more. The Oakhurst Beautification Committee recognizes a yard of the month. They decorate vintage lampposts with wreaths at Christmas and flags on patriotic holidays. The Garden Club plants flowers in common areas and conducts service projects. Member donations pay for smaller activities. Business sponsorships help fund the large ones. Members say beautiful trees and quaint homes are what you see when you drive through their neighborhood. But what you don't see is the spirit that binds neighbors together all year long. Congratulations to Oakhurst, our Fort Worth Neighborhood of the Year. Congratulations to all of our winners today. Thank you, Councilmember Flores, for being our MC. And a big thank you to our sponsors, Aetna and Maritain Health. Without you, today's celebration would not have been possible. I hope you've had a great time today. We have certificates for all of the nominees up here at the front, so make sure you stop up and grab your certificate on your way out. And thank you so much for a great day today. We hope to see you all again at this event next year. 